that's number one. You kind of reset your painful tender to the touch. May I also right. same shoulder length and the other. Episode 10. Wow, episode 10. Hey How everybody. Fun. Yep, this this is uh, Real Health with Brandy and Amir. I'm uh, Dr. Amir Rashidian. Brandy Rashidian is my wife. And uh, on Real and Health. And so many other things. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we won't need. <laughs> that can be a whole podcast. That's true. Right there. Um, but Real Health is where we teach you how to feel better, get stronger, live longer, and feel younger. And uh, I'm a fan of those four things. So yeah. um, we're going to go through some uh, news articles, what's been in the news, um, headlining, and so on. And then we're going to talk about uh, how that applies to you and what it means and so on. A big, big shocking thing happened uh, just yesterday. Um, which by the time this podcast, by the time you watch this, it's probably been a week or two since it happened. So more information has probably come out uh, by now. But to us right now, this just happened yesterday. So we'll touch on that. But first, why don't we jump into the first article we have, which is um, thousands of UK hospital doctors walk out in the latest pay dispute, crippling health services. Yeah, well, sadly, this is not the first one that they've experienced here recently. Mm. Um, so, I mean, I know I'm a little nervous over the UPS uh, potential strike and not getting all of our products and the uh, shipments that we need. Um, but here in London, um, I go here in London, there in London, <laughs> I wish I was there because I love London. Um, but right now, uh, what they're saying on U.S. News um, is uh, the um, title is thousands of U.K. hospital doctors walk out in their latest pay dispute. You just said that, right? Crippling health services. So thousands of senior doctors in England began a 48-hour walkout Thursday to demand better pay uh, and conditions, paralyzing hospitals and leaving only emergency care. Uh, the severe disruptions are the latest in a wave of industrial action uh, by public sector workers amid UK's ongoing cost of living crisis. For the record, I don't think they're the only ones in that crisis. We're feeling that too. Yeah, but they have a different type of health system. They have a different type, yes. Healthcare yeah, it is system. very different. Um, uh, they came just, uh, this comes just two days after junior doctors went on strike for five days which was the longest walkout uh, in the history of the, of the state-funded National Health Services, uh, which was actually started in 1938, I believe. I uh, have to get down to that. Um, so yeah, this is, a, this is a struggle. So the, the way they have their health system set up is um, the, the junior doctors, uh, it appears, are the ones doing majority of the actual um, seeing of the patients and the senior doctors are like consultant or they're called consultants. So they kind of oversee and no one there can work without the senior doctors overseeing. And so um, I guess it'd kind of be like an intern or whatnot. They have to, you know, work under the, the senior doctor's um, uh, license. Uh, so yeah, they're, they're struggling uh, right now. They're doing just absolutely necessary uh, emergent um services and surgeries um not much is going on over there um they're they're having a hard time uh what do you think of that you know, you know it made me think about u.s hospitals because did you know uh there's no regulation i mean this was about how much they're getting paid and it's probably because there's some type of i don't know what their system is if it's socialized healthcare or not but there's some type of system where I guess they just get a salary and the government determines their pay and so on. But in the United States, it's free enterprise, which means, believe it or not, hospitals have no regulation on how much they can charge. So basically, uh, I, I was listening to a different podcast yesterday and they said they called, um, I don't know, 100 different hospitals asking how much does open heart surgery cost? And the, the prices ranged from $47,000 to $440,000. Man. For one open heart surgery, depending on which which hospital you go to, which doctor works on you. So the, there, there's no regulation in the U.S. on prices. So just, you can get a really cheap open heart surgery. <laughs> you can get a really expensive open heart surgery. And uh, now um, there is a law that says they have to divulge the prices for everything they do. But mm. out of – and there's a fine if they don't. So out of 6,000 hospitals, only four have been fined. Um, I think President Obama is the one that made that okay. uh, a, a ruling. I'm not. Don't quote me on that one. I'll have to look it up. If I'm not going to look it up because it's not that important. But <laughs> some president sometime said, you know, hospitals have to reveal what their prices are. 
um, kind of like a menu at a restaurant, you right. know, open heart surgery this much, you know, vasectomy this much, um, you know, anyways. Uh, but only four have been fined out of four out of six thousand hospitals, and I think the fine was just like twenty five thousand dollars, which for a hospital that's not a lot of money. If they're yeah. if they're getting four hundred thousand dollars for one surgery. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure it also means then if we're talking about like paying cost of living and all that, they're also then going to be paying their doctors probably based on the revenue they're creating, right? Yeah. So, which gets to be a little bit of a, right. a slippery slope also. Well, and then we remember we did the article two podcasts ago about the um, um, doctors who made more money if less people died in their hospital. Correct. So they were sent in the hospice early, even though these, these patients are – Remember that, it reminds me of that comedy movie where he goes, I'm not dead. And they be quiet. And they throw him in the, in the truck. <laughs> Mon, so Mon, hopefully it it's not a, that severe. It was but... a Monty Python movie. Uh, bring out your dead. It was about the black plague. Bring out your dead. He goes, I'm not dead. Be quiet. Throw That's him so in. <laughs> well, the conservative government um, uh, has offered a 6% pay increase to these doctors in the UK. Uh, but the British Medical Association, um, the doctors' union known as the BMA, uh, called it uh, 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 derisory, I think they said. Um, only the doctors, they said that it's really been a decline over the past 14 years because although their uh, salaries have increased, it's not keeping up with the cost of living. So now, 14 years later, it's actually about of a, a third of a de decrease in what wow. they really should be making. Wow. So, um, you know, which is which is making it hard for them now. Isn't that amazing? Doctors not oh, yeah. having enough money to meet their personal expenses. Well, and check this out. And I will say, I mean, what would we expect or do we know what the average salary is for you know, what we would consider a, an equivalent to their senior doctor. I, I wish I had looked that up. It depends. I mean, I, I think uh, uh, hospital specialists are probably making uh, one hundred fifty to two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and uh, surgeons make uh, in excess of three hundred thousand dollars. Okay, three hundred being minimum, I think. Well, their starting salary in two thousand three was about eighty eight thousand three hundred pounds, which is equivalent to about one hundred and thirteen thousand. 453, um, rising to about 119,000. Everything's more expensive. 20 everything. years later. Yeah. So if you think about that, um, 113 to 119,000 pounds, that's not a lot. No. You know, for the cost of living there. So yeah. I can definitely see. And, you know, our, our doctors and nurses, are, they are on the front line dealing with things that yeah. others are not. Um, their biggest... Um, uh, I think argument is that certain um, workers in the UK, such as uh, attorneys and whatnot, their stuff has has kept growing over the years, whereas something like a senior doctor has has not. And so, and uh, this institution was actually uh, developed in or created in 1948, not 1938. So you know, it's been around for a little while, but they're struggling. So I don't know, I don't know what will come of that. Yeah, that's sad, you know, because what that typically leads to is, which is what happened to Iran, which is what, what yeah. what's happened in India a lot, is the biggest brains leave the country. They call yeah. it the brain drain. Uh, a lot of doctors left Iran after the revolution. I, I knew some of the doctor who delivered me, um, yeah. the OBGYN, the, uh, escaped, left all his, I mean, he was a very, very wealthy man. By today's standards, I would have said he was a... I don't know, $100 million plus was his net worth over there, and, and he left all of it, came here, was able to rent a small apartment, work a menial job, and study for his boards, mm -hmm. retake the boards because your degree doesn't transfer, right. and, and that country's not going to send your transcripts over. So he had to restudy for the boards, redo his residency in, in, in OBGYN, and then became a doctor again. Took him, I don't know, five, ten years, but now he's got the same net worth as he did there yeah. and he actually invented a device for deliveries and um so patented it and, but anyways um y you know th the greatest people will leave if you don't take care of them well and that's part of what they're experiencing right now they've had a lot of um senior doctors leave the uh to go to the private sector 
um, or to other countries. And so Australia being one, uh, because the wages that are offered are just far better. Mm. So, but you have really big bugs in Australia. I don't know if the payoff and jellyfish for me. So I think the deadliest creatures are in Australia and New Zealand. Yeah, beautiful places to visit. But I'm a little nervous. Don't about swim. That. Sharks. There's more sharks there too. All right. What's There's next? a little more coming out of uh, coming out of the UK um, for this uh, podcast. Here, um, let's see. This was on BBC News. Um, Bath school given. 50,000 pound fine for exposing pupils to radioactive gas. Um, so this article is all about radon uh, exposure. So there was a school um, uh, that it was a boarding school and several uh, teachers or employees and their kids that lived there full time and then five students uh, were exposed to high levels of radon gas. Um, so I guess, uh, initially the school had, um, had found out about this, had done some remediation, but then for about an eight to 10 year time frame, never checked any of their readings. And so they were not aware that there were areas or spots on campus that had very, very high levels still. Now, the one thing about radon gas is that you, it, it's not typically like an initial, um, there aren't initial symptoms. Um, t typically, those develop over many, many years, like a 20 year, you know, time frame, and uh, has been linked to potential things like cancer and, and whatnot. Um, uh, of course, it's going to be uh, experienced uh, the, the risk of cancer at a much higher level for those that smoke cigarettes. I do not find that surprising. I don't know if anyone else does, but I appreciate wow. them pointing that out. <laughs> so if you have been exposed to radon and you are a smoker, you may want to cease that because it's going to increase your risk uh, quite a bit. Um, we've known about radon anytime, especially here in Maryland. If you've purchased a home here in Maryland and you have a basement, especially, you have probably had a radon check done at you know in your inspection time frame if your radon levels were uh above the the um epa guidelines then uh the owners of the home would have been required to do pay for a mediation um to to be able to make sure that they get that taken care of and that it stays monitored so um short period of time radon typically it seems like it is not a huge issue it's something that is created naturally from the rocks from from the ground from certain materials um so it's there are going to be certain areas in in the world or in the country that um are more at risk. Um, so I was curious because almost every house we've purchased in Maryland, um, we've had radon checks done. We've had a few that we had to have, you know, something yep. uh, fixed. Um, so I did, you know, pull that up just to, mm. you know, so we could kind of see what that was. Um, it looks like uh, there's, they rate these in zone one, two, and three. Uh, zone one being uh, the highest levels. Um, so you definitely want to make sure that you're watching and, um, and checking your radon levels, especially if you have a basement. Um, but look for cracks in foundation, things like that will, will be ways that, um, that radon can uh, kind of seep into to the house. Uh, but unfortunately, folks, uh, Washington County, Frederick County, Montgomery County, Howard, Carroll, um, and even parts of um, Baltimore, Baltimore County, and Hartford, we're all in zone one, which means we run the risk of having the highest levels. Mm. Um, uh, zone two, which would be a little bit lower, Allegheny. Um, Garrett County, Prince George's, Charles, St. Mary's, Anne Arundel, those are going to be uh, kind of mid-range. And then Kent, Queen Anne's, Talbot, you know, getting out to more of the coastal, you know, areas there. Um, those are actually listed as zone three. Mm. So Calvert County actually is actually a zone one, which is a red zone. So Calvert County, be careful as well. So, um, you know, I don't know if this is like a huge, you know, article. I, I think you know, yes. Did the kids get sick? Uh, it sounded like I, that was hard to gauge through through this. Um, it was hard to gauge. They were tested and the limits were high, but it didn't say whether or not they were symptomatic. So, 
and I don't even know how how they test how they test that. So, right, because there really isn't a test for as far as I read as far as radon levels like in a, the like body. a blood so, test or an X ray. There's a, there's nothing yeah. like that. So just just be cautious and just know you're you're not going to. It's kind of like heart disease. The first symptom is the heart attack. Mm -hmm. The yep. first symptom of radon poisoning is probably the cancer. Yeah, or breathing issues. You know, it's hard because a lot of the same issues that you have, um, you know, with radon gas, um, some of the, um, let me just read it for you here. Uh, how does it affect the body? Breathing in high levels of radon over a period of time can increase your risk of developing lung cancer. Cigarette smoking is one of the number one causes of lung cancer. And radiate, radon exposure is estimated to be the second leading cause. So about mm. 20,000 people in the United States die from uh, radon-related lung cancers every year. Wow. Um, so it's that's not a small number, you know, by any means. Right. Um, the radon levels are usually higher in places um, that are closer uh, to the ground, such as basements or underground mines, near soil that contains more radioactive metal, poorly ventilated places, uh, processing or storing of certain products, uh, such as phosphate uh, fertilizers or uranium pack up that uranium uh very <laughs> tightly sealed and uh very well insulated is that a terrorist joke <laughs> <laughs> if it is i'm, I'm middle allowed. eastern you uh, point to me and say uranium <laughs> <laughs> well i married you so i guess i can do that um so you know those just just be super cautious um i think i was i was looking for to see if i could gain some overall Oh, chest pain, coughing. Um, these are the signs and symptoms. Chest pain, cough, difficulty breathing, hoarse or sore throat, trouble swallowing. Um, repeated exposure over time around 20 years can lead to the develop, uh, development of cancer, as we read. So, you know, th there are no immediate signs or symptoms from uh, breathing in uh, background radon. You just have to be cautious that if you're experiencing these things, they're probably things you'd go get checked out anyway. Um, and if they continue, you know, check, check your basement, check things never hurts. Definitely. Don't take it lightly. Yeah. yeah. If you haven't had a radon check in years, just, it's not, I, I think there's home tests also. There's like kits you can test at home yeah. by yourself, pick something up at the, um, drugstore and do a test. And yeah. the, the, the installation of the device is not that, that, cause there's a device that, that pulls the gas and it sends it outside. Yeah. And uh, that I don't think it's too expensive. I think it's yeah, a few so hundred dollars. If you're buying a home and you and you find that the levels are high, just have them fix it. Well, you know what? What's interesting is nowadays in in the real estate market, because there's such low inventory, people are buying homes without inspection. Correct, and they need to be checking those things. The inspections are yeah. not just to have yeah. see what you can get right. the you know the current owners to to pay for right. before you purchase, but f so you know what risks are yeah. are there right when we purchased a home we purchased it in an area where we could have had the risk of you know contaminated well water so we had to out of our own cost we double checked yeah. you know and we did a more extensive water test on yeah. our on our well but that was for our own peace of mind right. so do those things double check see yeah. what you know you don't want to be <sighs> You don't want to be living in a place that has high levels of of toxins, right? right. Uh, that's not that's that's well, important, but it's not a big it's not a terrible fix. Like fix right. it. It's not it's not hard to do. Right, absolutely. Um, so so let's talk about this real quick because uh, and I don't have an article for it, but yesterday um, uh, there was word that uh, Bronny James, yeah, LeBron James's son, had cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest is different than a heart attack because um, there's there's this thing called a myocardial infarct, which is a um, blockage of an artery that seems to happen in older people. But the cardiac arrest just means there's an electrical problem with the heart. The heart just stopped beating, Yeah, which is so scary for an 18-year-old who is fit, peak condition, one of the greatest athletes on the planet, um, related to one of the greatest athletes on the planet. Um, so, so I, I, first thing I want to say is my heart goes out to them. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine being, if, if you're LeBron James and they tell you, you your son was practicing just, pra it wasn't a game, it was practice. It yeah. was pra he was practicing on the basketball court 
with his team. I believe he's at USC. And yeah. uh, and his heart stopped. Yeah. Can you imagine as a father, you hear you hear that? What goes I mean, through no your mind? No parent wants and... to ever get a call or to, to see or hear about that. Yeah. So, so you know, our prayers are with them. Uh, and, um, you know, obviously, I, I can't think of anything we could do for them. But I'm going to encourage everybody listening and watching. Uh, just kind of say a little prayer that, that he's okay. I think he's in the ICU. Yeah. Um, well, he's out of the ICU. It says that he's now in stable condition and no longer in the ICU. Well, good. Um, the family is asking for privacy. Um, you know, during this time, but, um, and are very, you know, thankful for, you know, the USC, uh, medical and athletic, uh, team or athletic staff for, you know, working, you know, on the, mm. on the sidelines and whatnot to make sure that he was taken care of. And you remember last year, Damar Hamlin had cardiac arrest on the football yeah. field. Yeah. And, I uh, mean, is it me or are, is this, I, I feel like over this past, like, 12 to 24 months we've just heard about so many more of these cases is it that more are being publicized or is there an actual increase in these numbers what what is going on there i mean is, there is an increase in the numbers <sighs> um i don't have the source for this so but you, you know we maybe you could look it up but i i believe they said something like a couple dozen uh, athletes per year used to have some kind of heart issue on the field. A couple dozen, uh, somewhere around 20 to 30. And now it's been something like over a thousand per year are having heart issues on the field the past couple of years. Yeah, that's so a lot. That when, when you go from, uh, let's, let's just say 25 to 1200. Mm -hmm that's that something's going on and um you know obviously people love to jump on the uh conspiracy theory bandwagon yeah, it's uh, hard and, and actually right after that news came out there was another news that said um conservative lawmakers want to blame uh the vaccine for for this incident um now there was a lot of news about jamie fox we still officially have no idea what happened to Jamie Foxx. We just know he had a serious illness and he's recovering. He said he almost died. Um, but again, everybody said, oh, it's because of the vaccine. I, I, I have no idea. And I'm not going to say one way or the other. Um, I do know there's I a... I think it's a fair question. Oh, it's though. a fair question. I mean, I, here's, here's always my concern is that we should be able to ask the question and get a legitimate um uh unemotional response to that question i what always worries me is when we go hey what about this this seems interesting that this is happening now this is happening now this is happening and then we get so much pushback as opposed to having an open forum and, and having an intelligent conversation with intelligent people that can sit around and go Oh, could this be? Is this? I mean, what if it is? Shouldn't we be willing to have a conversation then let's, let's about it? Let's work on a solution. Yeah. Let's work on a solution. A hundred million people got the vaccine. If there's a risk of this, then we should we, sh we should announce it. I mean, the, every drug has side effects. Everyone. And they announce it. They say, hey, if you experience this, this, and this, go to your doctor. When you watch the drug ads, it says it right. may cause blah 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 blah. And uh, if you experience any of these things, talk to your doctor immediately. This should be the same thing. So uh, I, I, you're right. It, it, sh it shouldn't be a political debate. It sh right. <laughs> it's a scientific. should be uh, a health conversation. It, it, it should be a concern, <laughs> right? And both sides of the aisle should be concerned. Correct. And both should work together and say, hey, if there is a new condition that's prevalent in our population today that wasn't there yesterday, Let's figure out how to solve it. Right. And maybe, maybe we can catch these things before they happen. What if there was a solution? We had discovered, hey, you know what? Let's just say whatever he took, candy. He, he, he took a piece of candy. Right. And this specific candy may cause cardiac arrest. But if you take this other thing after it, then we can prevent that. And if we had discovered that and we'd given it to him, maybe he wouldn't have had yeah. cardiac arrest. I, I just... I think we have to stop, you know, 
um, we need to answer the questions that are being asked. We need to stop saying, oh, this is just conspiracy or this is, there's very clearly, and, and maybe sometimes it is, maybe yeah. sometimes, and maybe we just stop calling it conspiracy. Maybe we go, it was a question that was asked and it was answered intelligently, you know, with with true numbers and and true data, and it wasn't just brushed to the side. But whenever an important question like that is asked, uh, the minute you start going, oh, we're not going to talk about that. That's not that that can't be. Well, you you start to raise somebody's hackles, right? Because right. somebody's going to go, well, then why won't you talk about it? Yeah. If it's not, then it's not. But let's lay right. all the data out on the table so that we all know. And if it is, no one's blaming you. We're no. just saying, let's find a solution now. Right. I mean, you know, it is possible that the, the people that created it were trying to create something that they believed would be helpful in a time that was very scary for the entire world. Right. Maybe that was their stance. Maybe that's, you know, why they did it. And if that's the case, then just come and talk about it. Well, I mean, you think about like cancer, right? Can cancer kills people. Chemotherapy kills people. Right. Chemotherapy has a lot of terrible side effects. Mm -hmm. But you go, okay, well, because this is deadlier than this, then I'm going to do this. Then I'm going to work on recovering from the chemotherapy. Right. Chemotherapy literally is poison. Right. And not just to your cancer cells, but to every cell in your body. So is radiation. When they radiate a tumor, they're they like, radiate everything. They're radiating the yeah. body. I mean, that's the, otherwise you wouldn't radiate someone who's healthy because that will cause cancer. Right. So you go, okay, well, if if this treatment that they that they're they're giving people to prevent a major catastrophic disease has side effects. It's way better to educate people on it and say, okay, you know what? If you got this shot, then for one year, no serious athletic activity. Correct. Uh, and, and then you can go back on the court. Right. Maybe, maybe if, if you, you let, let's say this booster or that booster or whatever has a higher probability of affecting your heart only when like people are collapsing after running marathons and, and th these are fit, healthy people, soccer players, basketball players. You know, you go, okay, professional listen. and, and lay athletes, right? Right. The, right. It's not, yeah. it's, so it's, it's not like, just, okay, get the shot. And, and not, I'm just saying, I'm, this is not fact. So don't, this isn't true. I'm, this is just a theory, but I'm saying if it's going to affect the heart, well, then the heart needs to recover from that. So you would say, okay, for one year, you can't have maximal uh, exertion right. activity, right. no sprinting, no running marathons, no playing basketball. You need to take a year off. You needed the shot. You got the shot. N right. now you can't exert yourself for one year right. after a year we're going to test you make sure it's safe then you can get back on the court right right you know i i wish that with things there was never a financial gain because then <laughs> for anyone because then we would know why things are recommended or pushed and that goes for drugs um supplement like anything on the market you know what i mean that's what's so yeah. hard is motives um do come yeah. into play and that's what ends up making it political that's you know personally uh my personal stance is i'm a capitalist i love capitalism i think capitalism is the best economy i think it creates uh competition which leads to higher quality products better prices right nothing's better than that but uh in in a true system of capitalism you should be allowed to fail as well mm -hmm. so you put out a product that doesn't work you shouldn't get bailed out right. by the government. So, and again, uh, some of you know what I'm talking about uh, when I say that. Now, um, when it comes to healthcare, though, I go maybe socialism is not a bad thing. Mm. Not if the doctors are quitting like they are in UK, because right. you know that that may be socialized healthcare um, in those countries. And then right. I know in, in a lot of socialized countries, Canada too, they, there's there's a shortage of healthcare. Right. But when someone needs an MRI in Canada, sometimes they have to wait two, three months yeah. to get an MRI. Here, literally, like I order myself an MRI. I go same day. I walk in. I go, here's my script for an MRI. I'm paying cash. Right. I, I don't need to go through my insurance. I don't need it approved. I'm going to pay for it myself. And I go get my MRI. Same day, I come back. I, I read the results. Yeah. <laughs> and we're, we, we're good to go. Um, you can't do that in socialized healthcare, but there, there might be a way to make that work. And and so, can I tell you my my system that I, you know, if if, mm -hmm. if I'm ever in charge, I really, <laughs> I'll never be in charge. He's uh, not running. No, I'm not even walking. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I think 
um, healthcare cost uh, should be in the hands of the consumer, which is the person who gets sick. So yes, there's going to be people profit from sickness. And right now, a, a cancer patient is worth a million dollars to the hospital they go to. Mm -hmm. Literally a million dollars. That's a lot of money. And every cancer is so 10 million, 10, 10 cancer patients, $10 million additional revenue for that hospital. But what if instead of having insurance companies, the government, just like they check the IRS says, yeah. hey, this is how many how much taxes you owe. What if the government determined you can afford this much towards health care? Every dollar above and beyond that, you get a low interest subsidized loan from the government mm -hmm. to take care of that. And you'll have to pay that back. Right. And that debt goes to zero when you die. I guarantee you it would reduce health care costs everywhere. Yeah. And because you're, it's your money, you're going to shop around. You're going to say, well, I, I want the best, but I want the best in this price range. Yeah. So, so you know, let's let's say you're looking for a chiropractor. You go, okay, this chiropractor is $100 a visit. This chiropractor is $40 a visit. I'm going to go to the $40 visit chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And But now the way it is, in, if you're using insurance, insurance determines those and those fees and rates. And it just and, and the only reason they cut those rates and fees and deny certain services is because they want to create profit yeah. for their stakeholders, for their shareholders, for the people who have invested in them. It just doesn't sound right because they're profiting by denying care. And then a lot of healthcare systems are profiting by keeping people sick. Yeah. I think if we switch that, put the power in the hands of the consumer, just like other capitalist systems, that may work. It includes, uh, it involves the government a little bit, which I'm not a fan of, but that's my theory, and yeah. I think that would work. Well, hopefully um, somebody out there is listening and they'll maybe take that thought and toss it around a little bit and see if, see if they can't get something moving. Right. It's worth a shot. You want to talk about the last article? Yeah, we'll just touch on this real quick. Um, you know, we, we've had some, you know, we've talked about uh, plastics and, uh, man, we were talking last week about all the chemicals even used to create uh, a lot of these products. Yeah. Um, today, this article, um, this is uh, from NPR, plastics uh, is suffocating coral reefs, uh, and it's not just bottles and bags. So finding a new species of fish was the goal when marine biologist Hudson uh, Pinheiro uh, was diving in the Verde Island Passage in the Philippines, and he found them. But while he was down there, he found something else that was deeply troubling, plastic, loads of it smothering the coral reefs uh, uh, where the fish were living. So, um, and he said, this is, you know, this is really, really sad. Um, he, they said, it's really unbelievable how many of the coral reefs around the world um, uh, in our oceans are actually covered um, with plastic. Wow. So um, they said the result um, was that Pinheiro calls the most comprehensive catalog to date of the acres of plastic debris impacting corals. Uh, his team found that it sits atop 92% of the reefs that they studied including some of the most remote and uninhabited ones. Um, so they really expected to see more of this in the more, um, the higher traveled, you know, touristy areas. But what they're finding is even in the most, you know, remote areas, they're still seeing, you know, uh, a great deal of this, um, which we know is, is affecting, oh my gosh, it, it affects, you know, ocean life. It affects, you know, um, all the circle of life there and everything that's produced. And um, I, I guess this is also affecting, you know, um, you know, our climate and, and all of that. So um, we need to, we need to be cautious. I, <laughs> you know, there are some country or some States even that have, you know, made certain plastic products, yeah. you know, illegal. Well, I, I've, I've heard that, um, and a lot of experts have said this, climate specialists uh, have talked about this, how it's not the first world countries that are affecting the environment. It's not the gasoline cars and things like that. It's the third world countries yeah. that don't have those regulations on disposal of certain products. and That and they don't have... Um, they're, they're living off of lower income, you know, food sources and whatnot, which is an increase yeah. in like plastics right. and, and whatnot. And then on top of that, they don't have the, the yeah. funding and the systems to, to handle the disposal. Someone the waste said disposal. the entire United States disappeared. Mm -hmm. 
uh, pollution in the world would only go down by like five to six percent. Wow. But most of the pollution is being produced by like Africa, India, Asia, and Philippines, it, maybe. And uh, here's what's funny. Even knowing this, right, we have companies that are producing over, -count, over the counter medications that are now developing like plastics that their pills go into, yeah. right, that cannot be destroyed no matter what wow like it's a new so they're like no water can get in no moisture yeah. like they're you know they're creating that to protect yeah. the but they're doing so with you know products that are are gonna never break down yeah you know what i mean so trash go, forever it, it, that's part of the problem is we're not giving the regulations it's just like all the forever chemicals right. like yeah, these are problems, but until we start at the top and yeah. change those regulations and then monitor the yeah. companies doing that, but those changes are not going to not going to occur. You know what I found out? Uh, the company Chick Fil A, mm -hmm. the uniforms are recycled plastic bottles. Oh, really? All their uniforms are made from recycled plastic. Well, that's bottles. That's neat. It's pretty cool. Leave it to, to Chick Fil A. To, yeah, yeah. There you go. Well, um, go eat some chicken. <laughs> save the planet uh thank you everybody for hanging in with us um don't don't forget to say some prayers for Bronny james yeah and sure. um tune in again we'll go over some uh good news and uh hopefully share some valuable information with you god bless you take care thanks bye